Hello everyone, we're here at the Data Cloud Summit and we had a real treat for you. I call it the CMO Power Panel. And we're going to explore how data is transforming marketing, branding and promotion. And with me are three phenomenal marketing pros and chief marketing officers. Denise Person is uh, the CMO of Snowflake, Scott Holden of ThoughtSpot and Laura Langdon of Wipro. Folks, great to see you. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Great to be here with you, David. Here. Awesome, Denise, let's, let's start with you. Uh, I want to talk about the role and the changing role of the CMO. It's changed a lot, you know, of course, with all this data, but I wonder what you're experiencing and can you share, us, share with us why marketing especially is being impacted by data? Well, data is really what has helped turn us marketers into revenue drivers, into cost centers, and it's clearly a much better place uh, to be. What I'm personally most excited about is the real-time access we have to data today. In the past, I used to get a stale report you know, a few weeks after a marketing program was over. And at that time, right, we couldn't make any changes to the investments we've already made. Today, we get data in the midst of running a program so we can reallocate investments at the time a program is up and running. And that's really profound. Uh, today as well, I would say that adaptability has truly become the true superpowers of marketing today. And data is really what enables us to adapt to scale. We can adapt to customers' behavior and preferences at scale. And that's truly a profound new way of working as well. That's interesting what you say, because you know, in tough times it used to be, okay, sales, and engineering, put a brick wall around those. And, and you know, the, the, the aim at marketing, say, okay, cut. But now it's like you go to marketing and say, okay, what's the data say? How do we have to pivot? And Scott, I, I wonder what, what have data and cloud really brought to the modern marketer that you might not have had before to this modern era? Well, it's uh, this era, I don't think there's ever been a better time to be a marketer than there is right now. And the primary reason is that we have access to data and insights like we've never had before. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that I have a hundred times more access to data than I had a decade ago. It's just phenomenal. When you look at the power of cloud, search, AI, these new consumer experiences for analytics, we can do things in seconds that used to take days. And so it's become, as Denise said, a superpower for us to have access to so much data. And it's, um, you know, COVID has been hard. A lot of our marketing teams have never worked harder making this pivot to, from the physical world to the virtual world, uh, but they're, you know, at least we're working. And uh, the other part of it is that digital has just created this phenomenal opportunity for us because the beauty of digital and digital transformation is that everything now is trackable, which makes it measurable and means that we can actually get insights that we can act on in a smarter way. And you know, I, it's worth giving an example. If you just look at this show, right? Like this event that we're doing. <laughs> in a physical world, all of you watching at home, you'd be in front of us in a room and we'd be able to know if you were in the room, right? We'd track you with scanners when you walked in, but that's basically it. At, at that point, we don't really get a good sense for how much you like what we're saying. Uh, you know, maybe you filled out a survey, but only five to 10% of people ever do that. In a digital world, we know how long you stick around. and. As a result, like it's easy, people can just with a click, you know, change the channel. And so the bar for content has gone way up as we do these events, but we know how long people are sticking around. And that's what's so special about it. You know, Denise and her team as the hosts of this show, they're going to know how long people watch this segment. And that knowing is powerful. I mean, as simple as, you know, using a product like ThoughtSpot, you can just ask a question, you know, how many, you know, what's the average view time by session and boom, a chart pops up you're going to know what's working and what's not. And that's something that you can take and act on in the future. And that's what our, you know, that's what customers are doing. So, you know, Snowflake and ThoughtSpot, we've got, we share a customer with Hulu and they're tracking programs. So what people are watching at home, how long they're watching, what they're watching next. And they're able to do that in a super granular way and improve their content as a result. And that's the power of this new world we live in uh, that's made the cloud and data so accessible to folks like us. Well, thank you for that. And I want to come back to that notion and understand how you're bringing data into your marketing ops, but I want to bring Laura in. Laura, Wipro, you guys partner with a lot of brands, a lot of companies around the world. I mean, thousands of partners, obviously Snowflake and, and ThoughtSpot are, are two. 
How are you using data to optimize these co-marketing relationships you know, specifically? What, what are the trends that you're seeing around, around things like customer experience? So, you know, we use data for all of our marketing decisions, our own as well as with our partners. And I think what's really been interesting about partner marketing data is we can, we can feed that back to our sales team, right? So it's very directional for them as well in their effort, efforts moving forward. So I think that's a place where specifically to partners, it's really powerful. We can also use our collective data to go out to customers to better effect. Um, and then, you know, regarding these trends, we just did a survey on the state of the intelligent enterprise. We we interviewed 300 companies, US and UK, and there were three interesting, I thought, statistics relevant to, to this. Um, only 22% of the companies that we interviewed felt that their marketing was where it needed to be from an automation standpoint. So lots of room for us to grow, right? Lots of space for us to play. Um, and 61% of them believed that it was critical that they implement this technology to become a more intelligent enterprise. But when they ranked uh, readiness by uh, function, marketing came in sixth, right? So HR, R&D, um, finance were all ahead of marketing. It was followed uh, by sales. Um, you know, and then the final data point that I think was interesting was 40% of those uh, agreed that while the technology was the most important thing, that thought leadership was critical. You know, and I think that's where marketers really can bring, you know, our tried and true experience to bear and uh, merge it with this technology. Great, thank you. So, so Denise, I've, I've been getting the Kool-Aid injection this week around data cloud. I've been pushing people, but now that I have the CMO in front of me, I want to ask about the data cloud and what it means specifically for the customers. What are some of the learnings maybe that you've experienced that, that, that can support some of the things that, that Laura and Scott were just discussing? Yeah, as Scott said before, right, he have 100 times more data than he ever has before. And that's, again, if you look at all the companies we talk to around the world, it's not about the amount of data that they have that is the problem, it's the ability to access that data. That data for most companies is trapped across silos, across the organization, it sits in data applications, systems or records, some of that data sits with your partners that you want access. And that's really what the data cloud comes in. Data cloud is really mobilizing that data for you. It brings all that data together for you in one place. So you can finally access that data and really provide ubiquitous access to that data to everyone in your organization that needs it and can truly unlock the value of that data. And from a marketing perspective, I mean, we are responsible for the customer experience, you know, we provide to our customers. And if you have access to all the data on your customers, that's when you have that customer 360 that we've all been talking about for so many years. Mm -hmm. And if you have all that data, you can truly, you know, look at their, you know, buying behaviors, put all those dots together and create those exceptional customer experiences. You can do things such as the retailers do in terms of personalization, for, for instance, right? And those are the type of experiences you know, our customers are expecting today. They are expecting a 100% personalized experience for them you know, all the time. And if you don't have all the data, you can't really put those ex experiences together at scale. And that is really where the data cloud comes in. Again, the data cloud is not only about mobilizing your own data within your enterprise. It's also about uh, having access to data from your partners or extending access to your own data in a secure way to your partners within your ecosystems. Yeah, so I'm glad you mentioned a couple of things. I've been writing about this a lot and, and particularly the, the, the 360 that we were dying for but haven't really been able to tap. Uh, I didn't call it the data cloud. I don't have a marketing gene. I had another sort of boring name for it, but I think there's you know, similar vectors there. So I appreciate that. Scott, I want to come back to this notion of, of building data DNA in your marketing, you know, fluency, uh, and, and how you put data at the core of your marketing ops. I've been working with a lot of folks in banking and manufacturing and other industries that are, that are struggling to do this. H how are you doing it? What are some of the challenges that you can share and maybe some advice for your, your peers out there? Yeah, sure. It's um, well. You brought up this concept of data fluency, and it's it's a it's an important one. 
And there's been a lot of talk in the industry about data literacy and being able to read data. But I think it's more important to be able to speak data, to be fluent. And as marketers, we're all storytellers. And when you combine data with storytelling, magic happens. And so getting a data fluency is a great goal um, for us to have for all of the people in our companies. And to get to that end, I think one of the things that's happening is that um, people are hiring wrong and they're thinking about it. They're making some mistakes. And so a couple of things come to mind when I, especially when I look at marketing teams that I'm familiar with, they're hiring a lot of data analysts and data scientists. And those folks are amazing and every team needs them. Uh, but if you go too big on that, you do yourself a disservice. The second key thing is that you're basically giving your frontline folks, your marketing managers, your people on the front lines an excuse not to get involved with data. And I think that's a big mistake because it used to be really hard, but with the technologies available to us now, these new consumer-like experiences for data analytics, anybody can do it. And so we as leaders have to encourage them to do it. And I'll give you just a you know an example. You know, I've got uh, about 32 people on my marketing team and I don't have any data analysts on my team. Across our entire company, we have a couple of analysts and a couple of data engineers. And what's happening is the world is changing where those folks, they're enablers. They architect the system. They bring in the different data sources. They use technologies like Snowflake has been so great at making it easier for people to pull technology together and to get access to data out of it quickly. But they're pulling it together and then simple things like, hey, I just want to see this weekly instead of monthly. You don't need to waste your expensive data science talent. You know, Gartner puts a stat out there that 50% of data scientists are doing basic visualization work. That's not a good use of their time. You, the products are easy enough now that everyday marketing managers can do that. And when you have a marketing manager come to you and say, you know, I just figured out this, you know, this campaign, which looks great on the surface, is doing poorly from an ROI perspective, that's a magic moment. And so we all need to coach our teams to get there. And I would say, you know, lead by example, give them an opportunity to access data and turn it into a story. That's really powerful. And then lastly, praise people who do it, like use it as something to celebrate inside our companies uh, is a great way to kind of get this initiative started. I love it. You're talking about democratizing data, making it self-service, people feel ownership. You know, Laura, Denise was talking about the ecosystem and, and you're kind of the, the ecosystem pro here. How, how does the ecosystem help marketers succeed? Maybe you can talk about the, the, the power of, of many versus the resource of, of one. Sure, I, you know, I think it's a, it's a game changer and it will continue to be. And I think it's really the next level for marketers to harness this, this power that's out there and use it. Um, you know, and it's something that's important to us, but it's also something we're starting to see our customers demand. You know, we went from a one size fits all solution to they want to bring the best in class to their organization. Um, and we all need to be really agile and flexible right now. And I think this ecosystem allows that, you know, you think about the power of a snowflake, snowflake mining data for you and then a thought spot really giving you the dashboard to have what you want. And then, of course, an implementation partner like a Wipro coming in and really being able to plug in whatever else you need um, to deliver. And uh, I, I think it's really super powerful. And I think it gives us, you know, it just gives us so much to play with and so much room to grow as marketers. Thank you. Denise, why don't you bring us home? We, we're almost out of time here, but marketing, art, science, both. What are your thoughts? Definitely both. I think that's the exciting part about marketing. It is a balancing act between art and science. Clearly, it's probably more science today than it used to be. But the art part is really about inspiring change. It's about changing uh, people's, people's behavior and uh, challenging the status quo, right? That's the art part. The science part, that's about making the right you know, decisions all the time, right? Making sure we are truly investing in what's going to drive revenue for us. Guys, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Great discussion, really appreciate it. Okay, and thank you for watching. Keep it right there. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit on theCUBE.